Have you ever been so hungry for a spiritual experience that you felt like you would do just about anything to have one? I got to a place where I was looking for meaning in my life in all the wrong places. I had the house, kids, wife, all that. It was great. And I went off into the woods to try to meet God on my own terms. But see, the thing about God is that he tells us how to meet him, and it's not on our terms. God showed up in my life. He hit me over the head with some truth, threw me a lifeline, and pulled me out of the death spiral that was taking me more selfishly into myself. See, that's the big thing, isn't it? The whole world wants you to focus on yourself and not the only thing that matters. So these are the five habits I cultivated to bring me back into fellowship with God, and I've never had a better relationship with him. Really, at the end of the day, it's a difficult thing for us to wrap our head around that the most important thing for us to focus on is God's glory. It's really difficult to understand practically how to apply this very basic biblical truth. In fact, when asked what the most important command was, Jesus tells the Pharisees, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. Put God first. But what does that really look like? I think on the most basic practical level, the easiest way to explain it is that when we focus on God and put him first, we're not focusing on ourselves. Have you ever gone to a wing place and ordered way too much food? Like you get wings and, uh, you know, I get dumpster wedges and I get uh, pizza. Like I get all that food. I might get a pitcher of beer, uh, you know, with my buddies and we sit there and we eat way too much food. And the next day you feel like garbage. Like you go to the gym and you just don't feel great or you're at work and you have a headache or, you know, you just feel gross. We need a balanced diet. Sure, going out and eating a bunch of food every once in a while, there's nothing incredibly wrong with that. And it's good to to feast and have fun with your friends and all that kind of stuff. But we need to balance that out. If we did that every day, we'd be in trouble quick. We intuitively understand this with our diet, but not so much with our spiritual life. In fact, that we even separate our spiritual and physical lives is an indicator of that. Many people go and they they consume sugary sweet devotionals and a bunch of deep fried sermons and then wash it down with sticky sweet worship music and don't ever think twice about it. Then they're shocked when they're spiritually hungry all the time or they're not feeling fulfilled or they feel like their spiritual life is a wreck. I mean, do you go on YouVersion Bible app and just do the daily devotional there? Like, do you find that very fulfilling? I mean, I know some people do, but especially if you're a guy, I mean, a lot of those pastors are are women. Do you feel like that's discipling you or just giving you a quick spiritual high? And when you go and watch sermons, are you watching a lot of political sermons or uh, hot topic issue sermons that are affirming what you already think? Are you going and listening to a daily uh, health and wealth preacher, the prosperity gospel? And then when you're working out, are you listening to, to Bethel and Hillsong and some of those other places that maybe don't have the best theology in their worship music. There might not necessarily be anything wrong with this, except for the like false gospel health and wealth. Just don't get into that. But like worship music and devotionals and all these, yes, those can be a way to focus, but they're not a replacement for good nourishment. So just like your, your normal lifestyle choices, you have to have good spiritual nourishment. And these are the five habits that I came up with and that I used to cultivate a close relationship with God. And like I said, I've never felt closer or been closer to God, I don't think. So the five habits, you have observe the Sabbath, pray, confess and repent, read and study the Bible, and serve others. The Sabbath is like the cheat day of your spiritual life. The Sabbath is a holy day set apart. And we get this idea from two words in the Bible, Sabbath and Ecclesia. That's where we get the idea of church. But uh, church should be a day, uh, well, the Sabbath should be a day of rest and refreshment and fun. And if it's not, then you're doing something wrong. The whole point of a Sabbath is to set a day that's made for you to be refreshed, that's made for you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Now, we get that from, like I said, the two words ecclesia, which is the word church, translated as church, and then we get it from Sabbath. And both of those things were a convocation of bringing together of people. And so God is literally telling you that if you want to be refreshed, you get together with God's people and you worship God. That is the foundation for the rest of your week. So some of these habits are weekly and some are daily. Obviously, Sabbath and uh, 
the Lord's Day worship is a weekly one. Uh, the next one is a daily one, and it's prayer. Prayer is like drinking your water. It's something that you should do all the time. You should just kind of get used to it, and it should be a habit. I mean, we're actually called to pray continuously. And full disclosure, I really feel like my prayer life sucks. This is one area that I really strive to do better at, but uh, it's, it's always a work in progress. Here are some things that help me get better at it, though. For prayer, the very first prayer I say is right when I open my eyes in the morning, I literally stop and I go, God, thank you for this day. Please help me use it to honor you, to glorify you, and to do my best at my vocation, to take care of my family, to... I say a quick prayer the minute my eyes come open. And this was one of the most powerful habits that I've developed, I think. It really does ground me and focus me on God at the very first thing in the morning. When I sit down to work or I get to work, I say a little prayer. And one thing that has really helped is a book called The Valley of Vision, which is a book of Puritan prayers that uh, I've used. It was recommended by a buddy of mine. Um, and it, it's very powerful. I didn't really understand the depth of prayer until I started reading this book and looked at the Lord's Prayer and these different examples, uh, biblical and from the Valley of Vision. And lastly, I'd encourage you to read or listen to a few books on prayer. It really is just like any other skill. If you want to get better at it, you focus on it and you practice it. Last thing I'll say about prayer is it can be frustrating to pray and pray and pray and not see any answers. And um, it's a biblical concept, actually, that you can be doing prayer wrong. In fact, James talks about prayer, and he talks about being double-minded and not asking for things in faith. And that could be a reason that your prayers aren't working out. So when you're praying, just remember that it's that's a time to be patient and faithful and honest to God, but it's also a time to evaluate, you know, whether you're humbling yourself and putting yourself in a proper posture before God and not just treating him like a cosmic genie. Confessing and repenting is like a daily shot of caffeine. It's like energy drink or coffee, whatever your go-to is, but it is uh, like powerful. There's nothing that will keep you separate from God, apart from God, more than unconfessed sin. In fact, letting sin build up in your life really is a way for you to desensitize your conscience. Letting sin build up is like the, the spiritual equivalent of diabetes when you think about it. I mean, people that know that they have sin in their lives, but they ignore it, um, th this is a problem, right? Not confessing and repenting is kind of this subtle way of giving sin a nice cozy home in your heart and crowding out the Holy Spirit. In fact, even if you did every other thing on this list, if you went to church, if you, if you prayed, if you read the Bible, if you were serving others, but you have unconfessed sin in your life, then I would encourage you to read 1 John, because that is the thing. If you, if you say you haven't sinned, then you're separating yourself from God. And if you're not confessing your sin, then you're separating yourself from God. So it's a very important like thing to do daily and even more regularly. I, I try to confess sin as soon as I recognize that I have sinned. So the, the next habit is like the meat and potatoes of your spiritual life, and it's reading and studying the Bible. This is by far one of the ways that our mind is transformed, is by the hearing of God's Word. And so as we go and worship on the Sabbath and, and the Lord's Day, um, as we take that rest and we go and worship with other people, we're actually going to hear God's Word. And in addition to that, we should read and study God's Word. I would encourage you, if you're starting a daily habit, just to read every day. Reading should be a daily habit, I think. If, even if it's just a few verses, getting in there and reading a portion of the Bible is very transformative. I think studying is super important as well, but that can be more of a weekly thing. The thing that I would encourage you to do is to read or study it on your own for a certain section. Even if you're in a study uh, group for your Bible, if you're in a small group or something like that that does a Bible study, that's all well and good. And I think it's a really positive thing, but I would encourage you to read or study on your own. When we listen to sermons or do devotionals, we're letting somebody else kind of influence what's coming into us as well. And I think God uses that, but pray for the Holy Spirit to give you eyes to see and then read a section of Bible. Read God's word yourself. Finally, we have service, acts of service, whether it's serving at church or at a mission, uh, you know, some kind of, some vocational thing that you do, I think that's very important. It's like exercising. The other stuff is about how we get filled up. and uh, Well, church is kind of both. We're filling up and we're also pouring out. Service is like that exercise. It is the way to build up a positive spiritual hunger. It's a way for us to pour ourselves out and make space for all the work that the Holy Spirit can do in us. 
it's the tournament, right? It's taking all the practice that we do with reading and praying and confessing and getting ourselves right to go out and make an impact in the world. So those are the five habits that really helped me cement my transformation. Um, I, I like the example of Jesus calling Lazarus to life. When Lazarus died and was in the tomb, Jesus did all of the calling. Lazarus could do nothing to be brought back to life, but Lazarus still had to walk out of the tomb. And so once you are called, and uh, I don't think that any of these habits are going to give you salvation or life in and of themselves, but they are going to help you practice and partake in that life. So I hope that's helpful.